Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jasmine C, or some of y'all know me as Chi Chi, and today I'm back with another video. Wow! Hey guys, it's been a minute. I feel like it's been a minute every single time that I come back, but to be honest, it's been like two weeks. I'm gonna be honest, it's, it's been two weeks. Again, I'm under the weather. Not as bad as last time that my voice was, you know? Um, we're overcoming, we're getting through this. So if I sound a little yeah that's why anytime there's crowds me and crowds we don't go together real bad we don't a cold hate to see me coming like a cold hate to see me coming but today i'm just gonna be doing another christian chat with chi chi whoa i know y'all are excited i know i am i got i received a lot of questions that i said dang y'all ate with this one y'all had me actually sitting in my word like trying to find the answers like y'all had me and that's what i'm here for we're here to get deep we're here to learn we're here to edify encourage so just make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel like share comment subscribe on the video anything you want to say i'm here i always respond y'all know me i don't say i hope i'm not whispering it's it's low-key 12 a.m it's low-key 12 a.m i cannot be loud but the mic's gonna pick me up anyway so honestly if you hear me a little just if you can't hear me crank your volume but at the same time i have a loud voice so let's get on into the video first question i'm going to answer is uh how to navigate dating as a christian girly number one let the man approach you <laughs> we're not called to chase we're called to attract as women men are the ones who are supposed to pursue you and if y'all don't like this a lot of things i'm going to be saying it might be hurting you but go in the word go in the word because i'm also i'm not speaking on my own volition i'm speaking straight from what the word says okay we know the bible verse that says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and he obtains favor from the lord it's not she who finds a good a good man obtains favor no that's not what it is okay the man is supposed to pursue you that's what the word says i know some of y'all don't like that you be on some i'm i'm independent i want a man i can do it myself okay okay step into your feminine energy please relax step back step back if man wants you he's gonna show you so on your end when you're letting him approach you make sure you're still making yourself available you know not saying be desperate because that's two different things but make it clear you know like i'm a single woman women i'm a single woman hey me me in this 12 a.m y'all know i'm a 9 p.m sleeper i'm up but i'm up you are the rib he is missing and until he realizes that don't go chasing after him you can't tell a man that you're his missing rib and he's huh no pack it up pack it up because the next that with the this man won't the next man will that's all i gotta say on that understand your worth your values your boundaries and set yourself apart you want to be a woman of god and you want to look different from someone who is not a woman of god okay our dna comes from the lord so we need to be behaving in that way you're not seeking validation from a man, but rather he's adding on to your life. Friend of the girlies, you know how we say, I can change a man. I can make a man be a Christian. Boo. Sometimes you're just there to plant seeds and keep it bushing. That ain't your man. <laughs> that ain't your man. Focus on personal and spiritual growth because if you're so focused on a man and you forget that you also are here to have a relationship with God, that's a problem in yourself. Don't idolize marriage, relationships, any of that because what you want, God can just away from you if you're, you're focusing on on the man wow focus on a man rather than him so communication let integrity communication and transparency be the focal point of a relationship make it very clear you are a woman of god you know you want to stick to you know purity you want to stick to honesty you want to speak stick to whatever your values are do not do not break them and do not compromise just because you find a man so sweet so fine but the lord's timing is perfect and his divine timing everything's gonna come through the lord knows the desires of your heart navigate like i said how to navigate it let the man approach you be open and honest focused on god so that when he comes you're you he's adding to your life he's not taking from it you're already up here babes you're already here and he's gonna keep elevating you cool next question so do you find yourself conflicted with your appearance dressing modestly in god's eyes versus wearing provocative or revealing clothing um i'm asking because i hear some women arguing i wear what i want and that doesn't affect my relationship with god but others might say otherwise and if so where is the line drawn and how do you go about it yeah first part am i conflicted with my appearance for me no 
no not for me um i know what needs to be done every single day um honestly it's more than just what you're wearing it's more about your heart posture your your attitude towards how others see you as well what's on, what's placed on your heart when i get dressed every single morning i'm trying to honor god with my temple with how i look okay for me i don't struggle with it that much because if you see if you know me nine times out of ten i am in i'm in baggy clothes track suits track suits track pants hoodies i'm a streetwear girly down and if you don't see me in that i'm giving you soft girl era there's no in between but for me modesty is not something i necessarily struggle with when it comes to like the just the, the clothes portion of it because that's never been like even when i was in the world type beat outside i was never that was never my thing i was never dressing like that because why would i but like i said we all struggle with different things just because i don't struggle with modesty don't mean i don't struggle with other things like like i said it's more about your posture i always want to have reverence for the lord with whatever i'm wearing i'm not trying to make nobody stumble but even at the same time why would i be out here in some hey <laughs> let me not clock nobody i'm not even trying to come for nobody's next i'm talking about for me myself because that's that's what i'm answering for me myself am i conflicted not at all you want to honor god the holy spirit which dwells within us which is our temple that's what i just think about sometimes it'd be a little bit hard because it's like ooh, this one got a little slit here Ooh, this one got a little backless sometimes I, I can see why it's a little bit it's a little bit but then at the end of the day i know like hmm, i just know like if i pray on it and i don't feel comfortable i'll put it away i'll wear something else it's never that serious but the portion where the women were saying he said um women saying like i i wear what i want it don't change my like relationship with god when i first read this i giggled i'm not even gonna cap i giggled i said <laughs> y'all thought you ate with that one didn't you <laughs> y'all loves y'all love um like right there's personal conviction when it comes to modesty but i feel some things it's not subjective you won't tell me you can wear skimpy clothes or you can wear nothing and you're gonna be like well god didn't say nothing like i didn't hear nothing you agree with the holy spirit to the point where you won't even be able to discern what he's telling you so let's talk about that saying it doesn't affect my relationship with god how do you know that are you s close enough to god and in your prayer life to even hear him telling you maybe i don't want you wearing that babes or you know maybe da 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 because if you keep doing the same thing over and over when it's something that's so clear that it's a sinful behavior you're grieving the holy spirit and when you get to that point you're really not going to be able to hear what's right what's wrong what it says in romans um some some sounds so you may be able to discern the good perfect and pleasing will of god what is that that's romans please somebody give it to me is it romans 8 or romans 12 you guys know what i'm talking about i will find the verse but it's submit your no not submit your tool <sighs> holy spirit what is the verse so you may be able to discern the good perfect and pleasing will romans 12 2 okay, the lord gave it to me let me go on the bible app to make sure because y'all not gonna catch me slipping y'all not gonna catch me slipping Honestly, turn to your Bibles, though, everybody. We'll go to Romans 12, too, because I know it's Romans 12, too. <laughs> it took me a minute, but I got there. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing your mind. Then you will be able to test and improve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's the NIV version. I know I was going to get there. I just had to, I had to lock in. I had to lock in. My mind had to lock in. Um, you got to seek for God first. Seek God first. Be in prayer about everything. Because, once again, modesty is not just what's physically on you but it's more your inward appearance as well god looks on the inside so if you know i'm about to be stunting in this because i know i look cute and you know like this is my style and da, 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 that's one thing but when it's oh i'm doing this to turn the eyes of girls men everybody i want you to see what my frame looks like that's when it's like oh what are, who are we really doing this for what is this really for let's really check our intentions behind everything it's not just about avoiding certain types of clothing it's the intention behind it are we dressing in a way think about it when you wake up are you am i dressing in a way that god's gonna be um approving of um or am i drawn too much type too much of the wrong attention towards myself if you have a problem with modesty that's where we need to take it to prayer because what what really is it about modesty that's throwing you off is that you feel like you don't have um 
control over what you can wear because that's not what it is the closer you get to god the closer you will want to behave in mannerisms that he will like the things that grieves him is the stuff you won't want to partake in because why would i want to hurt my father why would i want to do that to him i'm trying to get like him i'm trying to get like you i'm trying to get like you lord so why would i do something that's going to upset you and i think that's when you start developing that type of mindset that it's like what he don't like i don't like a lot of stuff that you're you're holding on to so tightly that you're like i want to do this i don't do this you're gonna have it's gonna it's gonna just release it's gonna release it's not gonna have the stronghold and that that bondage it's having on you the way it is pray that's all i gotta say pray about that one um where do we draw the line like i said heart posture it's it's prayer it comes it really does come down to personal conviction but don't let your flesh win let your spirit lead okay in every decision you make and also yeah there is a conversation about how paul denotes how we don't want to be a stumbling stumbling block for others like romans romans 14 i believe um romans 14 13 you know have those values and beliefs that you don't want others to stumble but you also it's more of a i want to honor my body okay that's what i that's the the standpoint i take next question this one's deep this one is deep as well how to break soul ties um if you don't know what soul ties are they're deep emotional connections with others that can be unhealthy or unhelpful and it involves a combination of spiritual and practical applications in order to break when i sat here when i got asked that question i looked and i said that's a great question girl when do we all like to know <laughs> like but then i really sat on it and i prayed on it and i was like okay one it's prayer it's openness it's fasting and it's deliverance to break soul ties okay when it comes to prayer you need to be able to confess and repent you need to be so open and honest about what happened that's even making you like have to break those soul ties we know where soul ties come from you know we're all grown here um so <coughs> so like i was saying prayer um you need to confess and repent begin by confessing any um any scenes that isn't making you stay with this this soul tie any unhealthy attachments that god is not approving of you need to go before the lord bow down and just confess james 5 16 i'm reading once again i'm guys i'm always reading NIV. um it says therefore con confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed in the midst of that in the midst of laying it down before him ask him for help sit down and ask him for help pray for wisdom strength guidance and to, to and self-control self-control is a big one that i feel for the fruit of the spirit that we are lacking in and that's why we keep returning to our old patterns ask god to serve sever any unhealthy connections that have you have you running back to that man have you running back to that shati when you know you should not be going to that girl's house at 10 p.m 11 p.m 12 or even sleeping over at that person's house let's get it together let's get it together i'm not saying it's easy but let's get it together next um fasting um fasting is such a powerful thing because you're denying your flesh and feeding your spirits you're on you're reading the word you're praying you you have nothing you're not living off of food you're living off the word the bread of life the bread of life that we need our daily bread our mana like um it's a powerful way to break free from strongholds that your flesh is winning your flesh is winning that battle and is the one charging you forward when you start denying your flesh your spirit comes forward and that's what we need especially in these when you have strongholds that's fleshly things and it's also spiritual so you need your spiritual side to start like pushing forward and winning the battle okay um and in matthew oh, i love this verse so much matthew 17 21 but this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting sometimes prayer is not enough it's not enough you need to you need to deny yourself and me personally i love a good do a dry fast or do a not uh, daniel fast i feel like no i feel like for these ones you need to be eating nothing nada nada obviously pray let the lord guide you to what type of fast you need to do okay but for me when i really need to be breaking stuff like this it's it's dry fast or it's just no food at all just water it's a combination just water and the bible that's all you need um
also open it be open and honest of what you've been through don't hide in your shame for what's gone down and that's why you have a soul tie in the first place no you you've you you realize and now you're acknowledging the fact that you want to even break this emotional attachment with that person that's a big step because some of us will just sit here and be like it's fine i i did what i did so why i should just deal with it like it is what it is no that's what the enemy wants that's what the enemy wants he wants you to stay stuck and he wants you to stay comfortable and just in shame and keep your sins hidden don't do it don't do it you need to realize the nature of soul ties and the impact it can have on your life and further relationships oh my gosh let me talk about how this one this really got me um a pastor's wife when we went to like this church retreat she spoke about soul ties how if you go to the altar like when you're gonna go get married and you both have had soul ties you've both been in past relationships sexual relations with other people prior to your engagement when you go to the altar you're not only bringing uh so your your future wife and your future husbands like the couple it's not just the two of you get this get this and this was crazy i i my mind was I was gagged. I was appalled. And I said, oh. So it's like, imagine the man. Let's say his name is. Let me use a name that's so uncommon. Let's say his name is uh, Louis. Okay. So his name is Louis. And the girl's name is. I'm looking at my books. Joan. Louis and Joan. Okay. So Louis and Joan are getting together. Okay. Louis. Past relations. Louis has had. Um, look for another name. Louis has been with Joanna. And he's been with. Um. Uh, and Caitlyn and Joanna had depression. Caitlyn had anxiety. Um, Soraya had um anger management problems, right? Because they them all the girls he's been with have now attached themselves to his soul, which is the soul tie. He's bringing that to this girl okay and this girly let's say she's been with a man that's been abusive and manipula manipulative and um a narcissist she's bringing those spirits to him now now we're linking up at the altar and now we're all linked up with nine of us together ain't that the tea when you just wanted to marry this one but you're actually marrying this one and all their past attachments because they didn't get delivered from it before <gasps> clock it that's crazy work the spiritual realm is so scary hey you have to stay protected protected but honestly when i deep that i said deliverance immediately deliverance deliverance because what why would you take you love this new person that you're with you're going to alter with them and you want to take everything that you had in the past and put it onto them <gasps> gagged gagged to the maximum capacity why would you do that to someone so get deliverance please it involves spiritual and prayerful intervention and you can get a mentor a pastor someone that's trusted and a believer that's more advanced in their faith with you and knows exactly what you're going through so that they can encourage you and support you through this time because deliverance it is something no you got a girl i know you got a man whoever needs this whoever needed to hear this i know some of y'all really really needed this word receive it and move with it don't just hear and not do be a doer of the word not just a hero of the word that's what james says that's my james y'all know me and james go together real bad i love that book in the bible please i'll always tell y'all to read it be a doer of the word not just a hero of the word look it's like looking in the mirror and figuring out what your own reflection looks like <gasps> oh that man was spitting next question yeah next question i received was how to approach mental health as a christian i feel like even not just when it comes to christians mental health is such a taboo subject that people like to have opinions on or say mental health is not real please who told you it was not real <laughs> i know we all took biology well not me i dropped that in grade 10 <laughs> but i know most of y'all took biology or whatever it is psychology all them ones we all we know mental health is real your mental health is just important as important as your physical health because if you're if your mind ain't good your spirit ain't gonna be good either right everything flows from our heart and when our mind is not in the right place why do we think anything else in our life will be so number one you need to acknowledge what the bible says that we are made in god's image genesis 1 27 which means that our minds our souls our bodies our mental health all of that is a part of that we are to seek god in prayer philippians 4 6 to 7 it says it encourages us to bring all of our anxieties to god and remain in prayer prayer warriors stand up stand up and if you're not a prayer warrior let's we'll get you there we'll get you there because 
the more you focus on negative things is the more that's all you like if all you focus on is like being stressed being angry being anxious being depressed yeah everything in your life is going to manifest in that way because that's all your mind is on it doesn't know anything better start thinking pure honest valuable noble thoughts the philippians also says that philippians 4 12 verse 4 8 it's 4 8 so finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things right focus your mind on positive things i'm not saying be one of those people who are happy all the time okay but find joy because there's a difference find joy in christ because that's a different thing with your with your mental health it's something that just it'll it'll change the way you you start moving in life even when things aren't the best you need to rely on scripture for comfort and guidance the bible demonstrates how many people we know went through mental health uh struggles whoever says people in the bible are not struggling is a liar i don't know what bible they're reading but the one i read we have solomon who was reading ecclesiastes that brother was fighting king david was fighting elijah was battling like this is not something and these are men because a lot of us like to say mental health oh, it's just women or mental health men don't i'm speaking on men specifically for that reason so you're able to know like it's not just the girlies also if it's at that point where professional help is needed do not be ashamed like the bible even says in proverbs eleven fourteen, where there is no guidance a people falls but in an abundance of counselors there is safety there's no shame in consulting a therapist or a counselor especially those the ones who are biblical based faith based they will have the same values and morals as you and they'll be able to take you through um what you're embarking on in a professional mannerism so if you don't want someone at church knowing or you don't feel comfortable with your family go to someone that's really not even in the picture because they're gonna have that um fiduciary duty because you know i'm a law girly to do what they gotta do for to to do the best they can for you so i'm gonna say embrace grace it's important to know that you as a christian if you are feeling those types of emotions like you're sad you're depressed you're anxious any of those negative emotions to know once again you're not alone but also that that doesn't make you a bad christian at all you are human let's remember that yes we are spiritual beings but we are also human okay um paul even speaks about in romans how oh sorry in second corinthians 12 9 but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness so just embrace your journey embrace grace and know that god's by your side god is always doing what he has to do and when you're weak he is strong he we must decrease so that he can increase and he can be given all the glory in the end of it all uh the verse and that's what's really been holding me recently the whole uh romans 8 18 i consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of god to be revealed so 18 to 19 but 18 really specifically what's going on just know the joy that's going to come is going to hit it's going to hit so don't dwell really don't dwell i know for women it's hard we like to dwell and ruminate in our emotions i get that i'm one of those girlies <laughs> i'm who i'm speaking about but it's important don't dwell keep going keep going or my favorite one of my favorite verses especially when it comes to anxiety for the anxious girlies out there which do not receive that do not receive that you're not anxious at all please you're not cast all your anxieties on him because he cares about you <laughs> first peter <laughs> but um the verse specifically where it speaks about uh, it's in luke and it speaks on how how many of you by uh how many of you by worrying can add an hour to your life none of us can clock it when i read that the first first time i said oh you don't have to clock me that badly like why would you say something like that but yeah we can't add hours onto our life by worrying so why waste your time doing something do something more productive with your life go pray go pray go fast go eat go do something because worrying it's, it's not changing anything in your life now is it it's just making it worse how do you deal with judgment from others about your beliefs um so obviously you know y'all know i'm christian that's why y'all here it's a, uh, it's a christian podcast but i feel like back in the day um christians were more pros not prosecuted my goodness were more persecuted yo the law in me is crazy or more persecuted i feel like now as christians it's low-key easier to be christian especially in the generation that we are in because yeah because we're more widely accepted even back in the day i never swayed for the opinions of others but that's always been me <laughs> 
my thing is why would i listen to somebody who is somewhere i don't want to be if that makes sense i'm going after god you're going after demons you're going after the devil we don't have anything in common so you telling me or making fun of me or saying x y and z to try and belittle my relationship with god i just know i'm, I'm in the right religion i'm in the right faith because y'all don't be mocking the other religions and that's all i gotta say <laughs> that's all i gotta say i have a firm foundation with god that the opinions of others i'm not gonna be swayed by them i don't care about fitting in or being popular being known or being accepted that's not what i'm here for favorite verse guys my favorite verse second timothy 2 4 no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs but rather tries to please his commanding officer so they use the analogy of like a soldier to emphasize that our primary focus should be on pleasing god rather than people on earth or people that have opinions on us right that aren't that aren't our commander that aren't our chief that aren't our our lord and savior our master don't be conf so i just always remember like i don't need to be overly concerned about the opinions of others everyone's gonna have an opinion on you so why would i spend my time fighting for my life trying to please everybody when that don't even matter it's an audience of one at the end of the day judgments when it comes judgment day when it gets there when it gets to that day Am I gonna be sitting here talking? About, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do this podcast because I thought people were gonna make fun of me or people were gonna not support. God's gonna say, <laughs> "Did I ask?" Like you, that that that's your reasoning of why you didn't complete the the, the will I said you had to go through. That's crazy, guys. That's crazy behavior. Focus on your spiritual mission and calling, because at the end of the day, it's our Lord and Savior that matters, not the people that are bullying you or saying X, Y, and Z about you. When their eyes haven't even been enlightened to see the vision that God's placed on your heart or your God's place in your life. Obviously, they're not going to understand. They're going to have one, two, three to say about you. But it's up to you to stand firm in your convictions and know that the Lord said, I got to do this. The Lord said, I got to do that. So I'm going to stand firm on what he's told me to do and obey his calling because he's the only one I'm living for. Let nobody, let nobody, and I hope none of you guys are delaying your your will de or delaying the will the Lord has put on your life or delaying the mission he's called you to do because, because of people. It's not embarrassing. That is embarrassing. I'm, I'm i'm hoping you guys this take this as a sign when you if you've been knowing you got to be doing something or you got to move on something do it do it you'll feel so much better after next question thoughts on drinking alcohol smoking partying i think i answered this in the last one but the more i'm gonna sum this up more in a minute you get with god the less you're gonna want to do outside worldly stuff obviously if you're outside they got a christian hangout that's not what we're talking about cool that's really good but if it's at a party with worldly people drinking smoking all that type of stuff why are you there no reason for you to be there this one really don't require a lot to say like personally i don't drink alcohol never has been a thing with me even when i was outside i was not an alcohol drinker smoking please my health could never i'd be playing with my life if i tried to do stuff like that don't drink you can obviously drink and not get drunk but that one personal conviction smoking i don't know why you're smoking in the first place partying i'm a homebody i like really really big crowds i'm more of a intimate get together that's right can's party can's party i'm one of those like i like a small vibey type thing so partying not my thing not my thing um but for people who obviously that's their thing i'd say just pray find new groups of people trust me you can find people who have so many different hobbies other than substances and partying and sinful behavior you can have fun and not sin i don't know who told you you couldn't that's people who genuinely are intoxicated 24 7 i don't know how to live without it i'm sorry if you are telling me people you got you can go outside and be sober ah and you can't i'll pray for you next question does modesty only apply to clothes no it's not just limited to clothing it can be accessories it can be makeup um i know the bible says first peter three three to four your beauty sh your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and they're wearing a gold jewelry or fine clothes rather it should be that of your inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of a great worth in god's sight so which isn't highlighting the importance of inner beauty and a humble spirit once again modesty is not just like outside don't take this as literally like clothes or like gold jewelry like oh i can only wear silver no that's not what he mean uh that's not what paul's saying 
or sorry that's not what peter is saying it's more focused on on your inward appearance and the attitude of your heart your intention behind everything how you're dressing how you're looking see like i said it's not just limited to clothing um, anything that takes the focus off of our spirit and places it onto our outward appearance you don't want your flesh to be the one like i said be your flesh should not be the first thing people see that makes sense spiritually think about that they should be able to see your attitude your love joy peace patience kindness goodness before they start seeing that oh she's wearing no clothes or oh she's wearing small shirts you know what i mean y'all know what i mean like your spirit should speak before your flesh oh that's a bar spirit should speak first before your flesh does <gasps> put that on a t-shirt last question i'm gonna answer today because the video is giving lengthy the video is giving lengthy as of right now <laughs> before any chopping um thoughts on christians eating pork so the old testament as we know was strict before jesus came new testament jesus came so he came died on the cross um washed away all of our sins so it's very different in the new testament um paul spoke about uh not fighting about what others eat and ingest and focus more on their like relationship with god so in romans 14 1 to 3 except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters one wow one person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. So once again, this is New Testament speaking. God has already accepted all of us. We just have to now receive it and come into agreement with it and say that the Lord is our personal Savior, our Messiah. And as well as Romans 14, 17, that I also found with this verse, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So thoughts on Christians eating pork, that's not a thought in my mind, if that makes sense. That's not something that I wake up and I'm like, oh, I just seen a Christian eating pork. Ooh, they going to, they going to the, no. Um, my thoughts on it, me personally, I don't eat pork. Yeah, I don't eat pork. Um i'm not well i wouldn't say i'm not not strict like the only pork you'll ever see me eat is if it's pepperoni on a pizza type beat but it's not like i would not go out of my way to start eating pork like that would be i will not eat pork i will not i mean that's just like my mother also doesn't eat pork so it's like why would i that's just how i kind of grew up my siblings are different but me i don't i personally i don't i don't go to pork that's just my own choice for my own faith like I said, um, if I see the next person eating pork, I'm not going to be like, oh, you're less of a Christian than I am because I don't eat pork, but you eat pork. And back in the day, we weren't supposed to eat pork. Da -da 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 -da. No, I won't do that. Um, everyone's convictions are different. Uh, the New Testament even speaks about this. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. It's about righteousness. And that's all we're focused on. So thoughts on it? I don't do it. But with those who do, y'all do you. Pork is, pork is not my tea anyways those are all the questions that i'm going to be answering for this q a if i answered your question or you have any more just leave a comment down below like share comment subscribe anything you want to say i hope you guys enjoyed and you learned and you learned you got advice you got counseling for things you needed or you know maybe it was a word that you heard and then you said dang like i needed to hear that type b like i'm i'm always here like i said the form down below for the salvation prayer and also if you have any prayer requests i'm here i'm always gonna pray for every single one of y'all that are watching across the screen um i can't wait to see y'all guys in the next video hopefully i will not be sick by that point because my goodness every other video i'm you can probably hear by the end of this one that my voice is really giving out at 1 a.m but i will see you guys in the next one and just remember your story is still being written and there's beauty yet to unfold Mwah.